I would like to share with you Gabe Brown's Principles of Soil Health. This is from his book, Dirt to Soil. It would be really great if there was widespread adoption of the principles of soil health for so many reasons. One is for better nutrition, better water quality, better uh, management of our climate, etc. So let's look at the principles of soil health as set forth in Gabe Brown's book, Dirt to Soil. So here is the, the book, Dirt to Soil, One Family's Journey into Regenerative Agriculture by Gabe Brown. I highly recommend it. I've read it multiple times. I keep going back to it as a reference. One of the, the core of, uh, of the book is the principles of soil health. So principles of soil health are avoid tillage, avoid chemical fertilizers, avoid biocides, that is insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides, keep living roots in the ground, armor the soil, and go for diversity in the soil and in the plants and in the animals. You're going for diversity. That's biological diversity. So the principles of soil health, avoid tillage. Why avoid tillage? Because the soil has structure. The soil has it is like a sponge with all of these, you know, tunnels in it that uh, tends to absorb water. It gives things, uh, it, it provides for the transfer, kind of the communication and exchange of nutrients. And uh, so if you, if you till ground, it's kind of like destroying all the buildings of a city and then expecting things to get back to normal. It just doesn't work that way. So uh, tillage destroys the structure and function of the soil. There's no place left for the living organisms, the water or the air. Tillage destroys the soil's ability to deliver nutrients to the plants. Secondly, avoid chemical fertilizers. So chemical fertilizers are salts. If you throw salt on a, on a worm or a slug, it's going to shrivel up and die because there's, there's water inside it and the salt sucks the water out of it. Uh, that, that's the way our chemical fertilizers are to all of the living organisms that are in soil. They, they suck the water out of them and kill a lot of what is in the soil. So, uh, uh, and also the chemical fertilizers uh, short circuit the ability of plants and soil to deliver nutrients to the plant. Next, avoid biocides. Biocides means insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Biocides are life killers. You, you would think that you can target one type of organism and, it, and that's okay, but there's always collateral damage. When there's biocides, there's always collateral damage. There's always a certain amount of toxicity that gets into the, the ecosystem, the soil ecosystem and the ecosystem that plants share with the soil. So uh, it's just, they're, they're bad news. And, um, you know, for example, an insecticide is also going to kill butterflies and bees. And the you know, you, insecticides are also going to kill beneficial insects. So you, don't, you just don't want to go there. It, we can do pest control without insecticides, uh, and we can do weed control without herbicides, etc. Next, keep living roots in the ground. Living roots refers to plants. Plants are uh, plants take carbon out of the air and put it into the soil. So then the carbon that plants take out of the air and put into the soil, it jump starts the soil food web. So, um, and, and it, it, it enriches the soil with carbon. It increases the, the soil structure. It increases the ability of the soil to absorb water and to uh, make, ensure the, and provide for the exchange of nutrients among all the living things in the soil food web. Next, armor the soil. That means keep the soil covered. Keep the soil covered with some kind of organic matter, plants and organic matter. This keeps the soil from drying out. It provides for weed control. And, uh, it, it, and, and both of those things are huge. It's like keeping the soil from drying out. If you keep the soil from drying out, then it's, uh, um, the everything, all living things depend on the water. So keep the soil from drying out. Keep the uh, water, keep the organic matter on top of the soil. 
So provides for weed control, prevents things from drying out, provides food for soil biology, that organic matter, over the course of time, is going to decompose because there are things in the soil, the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, the nematodes, the microarthropods, are going to, uh, uh, to uh, decompose the organic matter. That's where soil comes from. That's what soil is made of. Lastly, diversity, or second to last, diversity. So diversity sets the stage uh, for diversity. Uh, we're talking about ecological farming, ecological landscaping, ecological gardening. The gold standard in ecology is biological diversity. You want more biological diversity. This provides for the exchange of nutrients. This provides for pest control. So go for diversity. Go for diversity with your plants and much else will stem from that and flow from that. So diversity sets the stage for diversity of plants, animals, fungi, and microscope, mi microbes. Diversity provides for disease resistance and uh, diversity provides for the efficient use of resources such as water. Uh, lastly, incorporate animals. All ecosystems have animals. So we're talking about ecological farming. All ecosystems have animals. It's a mistake to try to do farming without animals in some, uh, without somehow incorporating animals into the process. So um, graze, this might mean you can graze livestock on crop fields, but if it's just your garden, it might mean incorporating manure into the compost. So the principles of soil health, avoid tillage, avoid chemical fertilizers, keep living roots in the ground, uh, avoid biocides, armor the soil, and provide for diversity. If you do this, you will get better results with less time. Uh, you, you will provide for, it'll be more profitable due to diverse income streams because you're not just dealing with monocrops. Uh, it will save money on inputs such as fertilizers, biocides, and water, and diesel fuel. <laughs> It'll avoid toxic inputs for, uh, for better health. There's better health because of avoiding toxic inputs. You will be able to capture rainfall better and provide for better nutrition. That's all. Thank you for joining me for this uh, quick summary of the principles of soil health. We uh, can, should, and will. At some point, we will be practicing the principles of soil health. The question is whether we do it voluntarily or we do it because we have to. Thanks.